Knicks fans, NBA free agency is officially here, and the New York Knicks are already being active. Arguably the most active team so far as it's been 15 minutes of open free agency. They've already made not one, but two moves, and the first one being, you guessed it, Jalen Brunson is heading to the Big Apple, reportedly is going to sign a four-year, 110 to $106 million deal. There's a bunch of different reports out there. Some people are saying 110, some people are saying 106. When we get you that official number, we will update you in the comments section. I'm a big fan of Brunson. We'll break down everything I have to say about Jalen Brunson in a second. But the Knicks also made another move. They signed a center. Is this going to be the starting center? Or will this be the backup center once the Knicks re-sign Mitchell Robinson, which all signs point to that they will do that. But they are signing big man Isaiah Hartenstein to a two-year deal worth $16 million to join the New York Knicks as well as Jalen Brunson on the first 30 minutes of NBA free agency. Shams, he broke the story about a couple 20 minutes ago or so, said free agent Jalen Brunson intends to sign a four-year deal worth up to $110 million with the Knicks. Then he backdoored that and said free agent center Isaiah Hartenstein has agreed to a two-year $16 million plus deal with the New York Knicks, sources tell the Athletics. So Leon Rose, he clearly had a plan coming into the early parts of NBA free agency. He got Jalen Brunson. We knew that was fish number one. I like Isaiah Hartenstein but he wasn't the second biggest fish. I'm expecting another big move coming very soon by the New York Knicks, but let's take a look at what Hartenstein was as a player last year for the Los Angeles Clippers. This is someone that showed he could start to shoot the three-point ball. Shot about 43s last year, made 46% of them. He's also really efficient around the rim, 62.6% from the field, eight and a half points per game, Five, assist, uh, five rebounds, a decent rim protector. He has a pretty good field goal percentage allowed when he gets uh, shots taken on him at the rim. He's a different big than we've seen in a while for the Knicks. You can give him the ball at the high post, and he can, you know, distribute the ball, and you can run the offense through him with a little high pick and roll, pick and pop action, a little playmaking from the top of the key. I'll ask you this question, then we'll continue to break down everything surrounding Hartenstein, Brunson, and the Knicks free agency rumors and news. Let me know what was a better signing for the Knicks. Was it Brunson for four years, 106, 110 million? Or was it Isaiah Hartenstein, two years, 16 million? Type JB for Brunson, type IS for Isaiah Hartenstein. So it's done. Jalen Brunson is going to the New York Knicks. It is official. And I'm glad. I'm excited. I'm a big fan of Jalen Brunson. What he did in the playoffs made me a believer. And I saw enough from him in a regular season when he became a starter to realize that he is someone that you could build a franchise around at the point guard spot. Is he an extreme needle, needle mover? No. Are the Knicks going to be competing to win the NBA title this year? No. But they are a competent team with a direction and someone in charge that has an idea of what they should be doing. And getting Brunson a point guard that averaged 16 points per game last year doesn't sound too shabby to me, man. 16.3 points per game, played in 79 games total. One of the most things that I think is under-talked about when it comes to Brunson is he is a very available player. He's durable. Sometimes the best ability is availability, and he's been that. Playing 79 games this year, starting 60 games. One of the most efficient players in the NBA as well. Was 50% from the field while shooting 37% from beyond the arc. And then he got to the playoffs and said, you know what? I'm going to be better than I was in the, in the regular season. Upping his average to 21.6 points per game. Also to go along with 3.7 assists. And he stayed that cool calm and collected type of player he is where he was efficient from the floor 46.6 percent from the field and 34.7 percent from beyond the three-point arc i like brunson i'm excited but i want you to light up the comment section right now be honest with me don't hold back what was your one word reaction to the brunson signing are you happy mad sad pissed do you want more let me know in the comment section your one-word reaction to Jalen Brunson signing with the New York Knicks. And this is why you subscribe to New York Knicks now. Because once the signings came out, I hopped in the studio with my main man, Trace Gerard, to get in the lab and get you guys a video. We were working on other stuff, 
but nothing trumps getting you guys the fastest. New York Knicks news and rumors. And with NBA free agency here, we are going to be putting out multiple videos every single day for the coming weeks. So lock us in, hit that big red button, help us get to 8,000 subscribers right now. Jalen Brunson is a baller. Let's stop all the hate. We haven't seen a New York point guard do what he's about to do in a very long time. And I tweeted this a couple of days ago. And I thought, you know, this is a great point by me. Not to toot my own horn a little bit. But think about this. Jalen Brunson, without Luka Doncic, in game two of the first round of the Western Conference playoffs against the Utah Jazz, down 0-1. They lost game one. It was a must-win game. And Luka Doncic wasn't playing. And Jalen Brunson said, no, Luka. No problem. Here's a 41-point ball to go along with eight assists and five rebounds in a win over the Jazz. The last time a New York Knick dropped 40-plus points on the, way to win, on the way to a win in the playoffs was Carmelo Anthony back in 2012. And prior to that, it was Patrick Ewing in 1990. So let's stop acting like this is something that we are used to because we're not. And maybe you're like, you know what, 16 points isn't enough for me. Well, when Jalen Brunson took over the starting role in Dallas, he upped his totals and showed that he's a big-time player, averaging 17.5 points per game to go along with five assists and stayed that cool, calm, and collected guy that we've already talked about, where he shot 50% from the field and almost 39% from downtown. Jalen Brunson is a baller. And here's some stats that I feel like Knicks fans need to know about Brunson. So let's break it down. All these coming from Tommy Beer, the best stati statistician on Twitter when it comes to the Knicks. He said, most games with 25 plus points, five assists, and fewer than two turnovers in the 2022 postseason. Jalen Brunson had three, Jimmy Butler had three, Steph Curry won, Luka won, Chris Paul won, and Devin Booker won. But it doesn't stop there. The complete list of all NBA players who have tallied at least 40 points, five assists, and five rebounds in a playoff game without committing a single turnover. It's a very, very prestigious list. Kobe, Hakeem, Dominique, Chris Paul, Jamal Murray, Shaquille O'Neal, and you guessed it, Jalen Brunson. But it gets better. Jalen Brunson led all players in total points scored in the first round of the 2022 NBA playoffs. Ahead of Joel Embiid, Nikola uh, Jokic, Donovan Mitchell, and Brandon Ingram. And dating back to the 2020 and 2021 season, Brunson has shot 51% from the floor, 39% from downtown, 82% from the free throw line. And only four other players in the NBA have matched or exceeded those percentages over the past two seasons. KD, Kawhi Leonard, Mikel Bridges, and Carl Anthony Towns. And wait, there's more! During the 22 playoffs at age 25, Jalen Brunson averaged 21.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and almost 4 assists. Over the last decade, only 10 players age 25 or younger have matched or exceeded those averages in a postseason. KD, Russ, Giannis, Paul George, James Harden, Jason Tatum, the Joker, DeJ uh, Jalen Murray, Devin Booker, and Luka Doncic. So let's stop acting like Jalen Brunson is some scrub, just some sidekick, just some average point guard, because he's not. He's a big-time player, and he plays his best games in big-time ball games. So I'll ask you to grade the signing right now. How are you feeling? Get out the red pen. Be honest with me, because as New Yorkers, we're loud, we're proud, we like our opinions to be heard, and sometimes we're brutally honest. I am a little bit, and I want you to be in the comments right now. Type A, B, C, D, or F when you grade the signing of Jalen Brunson. And let's stop the talk of it's an overpay. Because simply, it's not. Four years, $106 million. What's that, about $26, $27 million per year? Does that make him one of the highest paid point guards in the NBA? No. These are the top 10 highest paid point guards in the NBA prior to NBA free agency opening up today. Steph Curry, $48 million. D'Angelo Russell, Three or thirty-one million dollars. I'd take Brunson over Russell. I'd take Brunson over Ben Simmons. I'd take him over John Wall. I'd take him over Russell Westbrook. But this is where he's going to fall in. Where Shea Gilgis Alexander is making thirty million dollars. De'Aaron Fox is making thirty. Chris Paul's making twenty-eight. Kyle Lowry's making twenty-eight. And then Jalen Brunson will settle in right there as he's expected to make twenty-five and a half million dollars this year. I'd take him over Lonzo, Spencer, Fred. Terry, 
all those guys. This is what the deal officially will look like if the numbers continue to be accurate at four years at 110. We've also seen reports of four for 106. So if we get it officially, I'll let you know in the comments. But 25 and a half this year, 26.8 the next year, 28.1 in 2024, and 29.4 in 2025. Then he will be an unrestricted free agent before turning 30 years old. Simple as this, it costs to be the boss. And Leon Rose is spending those checks to get players to New York. Because we haven't had very good point guards in a very long time. So I'm not going to complain about Jalen Brunson. Is he a top 10 point guard? Maybe. But he's for sure a top 15 point guard. And he's being paid as the 14th highest in the NBA. So let's not overreact. And when you come from being a Knicks fan, we have been in point guard hell for the last 13 years. Let's take a look at who's actually been the starting point guard for the Knicks on opening night. Kemba, Alfred Payton, Alonzo Trier, Trey Burke, Raymond Sessions, Derek Rose, Jose Calderon, Shane Larkin, Pablo Prigioni. I love Prigioni, but he ain't no superstar. He's solid, but it's he, Pablo is what Pablo is. I love him. I got respect for him, but he's not an elite player. You also had Raymond Felton in 2020, 12, or 2012, Tony Douglas in 2011, then really good Raymond Felton in 2010, and Chris Duhon in 2009. So we have not had good point guards, and I'm not about to act like Jalen Brunson is not one because we come from a place where it was called point guard hell. That's what we were in, and now we're out of it. We have a top 20 point guard on a reasonable salary. Now it's just up to Leon Rose to fill out the rest of of the roster. We have Isaiah Hartenstein on a two year, $16 million deal. That's not a needle mover as well. We need to make a trade. We have 11 first round picks over the next seven years. Eight of those 11 first round picks are tradable assets. So if the Knicks identify someone on the trade market, they have all the chips they need to, to go out and move him. I'll ask you this question, and then we'll take a look at what maybe that starting lineup will be for the New York Knicks. Who do you want the Knicks to sign next? Brunson and Hardenstein, their deals are done. Maybe they sign someone else. Maybe they re-sign Mitchell Robinson. Maybe they make a trade. But give me a name in the comment section, someone you want the Knicks to sign next. A starting five of Brunson, Fournier, RJ, Julius, and Mitchell Robinson has a lot of potential. I am a little bit concerned about the Brunson and Fournier backcourt Brunson's not a bad defender, but he's not an elite defender. He's solid to above average. As we know, Evan Fournier is not. I like him to go out and get another defensive-minded wing. Maybe you start for, uh, Quentin Grimes and bring Fournier off the bench. But all in all, the Knicks have talent, they have a direction, and they still have a core of youth assets on this roster. I appreciate everybody making New York Knicks now a part of their day today. If you made it this far in the show, you're a real one. There's going to be a lot of real ones watching this show. If you made it this far, type real one in the comment section so I can decipher the fakers and the phonies from the real ones. And we'll see you as soon as the New York Knicks make another move in NBA free agency.